Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you the RPG tech stack and we will also look into the capabilities, uh, scalabilities, as well as the component views. And without further ado, let's now get started. Okay, so the first one here, you can see that the RPG uh, Edge has three core functional areas, the RPG uh, services, uh, developer services and analytic services. So RPG capabilities is in blue. So you can see here as well, all of this blue. And the green one is the uh, open source capability. And RPG capabilities like gateway uh, and the analytics, it rely on the uh, open source uh, infrastructure to uh, support the uh, storage and data replications. And the gateway here, it sits on the critical path and component included here represents the runtime of the uh, API deployed on the RPG. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Um, right here, so this is the first graph. Okay, so the RPG edge it, uh, is uh, horizontally uh, scalable. Uh, for example, like adding the capability to handle more API code is as simple as adding additional gateways. And this one right here, um, at some point of time, so scaling the uh, gateway horizontally, it might need scaling the support uh, infrastructure to support more or to handle more data that is uh, being generated by the system and component related to other capability like the uh, developer portal, uh, system management, and the UI, it only need to scale based on the requirements associated with those capabilities. So right here, this is another one. Let me just show you. Yep. Okay, so uh, horizontal uh, scalability, it applies the uh, capability within the region or across the uh, regions. By design, RPG Edge is active active. So it means that there is a continual consistent data uh, replication eventually across data store uh, located in all regions. And in the diagram, you can see here, there are two regions. So this is the region one and region two. And the RPG traffic is a channel to uh, one or both regions depend on uh, consumer preferences. So usually it is handled by a global load balancer, but it's not showing here. Or the uh, DNS uh, resolution. So regions are independent of each other. Uh, so say once a an API call arrive at the gateway. So it will stay in the region where the uh, gateway is located. So say if there's a new API call arrive here, then it will just stay inside the region one. Otherwise it, it uh, arrive either at this gateway or this gateway, then it will just stay inside the region two here. So the blue and green boxes um, here, blue and green, all of this, um, they are the services or the components. And now let's just uh, take a look at the uh, critical path. So now let me just go to the next one. Okay, so this is um, another one which is the component view. Look at the critical path here from the client um, to the backend system. So the first component on the uh, path is the router and it is responsible for uh, exposing virtual hosts or load balancing the incoming request. And the message uh, processor, it represents the runtime uh, container for RPG executed on RPG. And API calls um, executing on the message processors uh, may perform one or more uh, calls to the uh, backend systems. So all calls uh, to the AP, uh, backend system on RPG are originated by the um, message processors here. And some API can generate runtime data uh, that are needed to store uh, within the RPG itself. And uh, API policies such as the uh, API key validations, OAuth, or key value map, or cache, it need to uh, access to a data store. Uh, for the storage and the retrieval of the uh, runtime data. So RPG runtime data store is called the Cassandra, it, which is right here. Uh, it is a part 
of the uh, critical path and it is used by the RPG uh, policy to store data run uh, during runtime execution. The full critical path consists of the um, router, message processor, and the Cassandra uh, services. As long as this component uh, is up and running, other component can be down. So other component can be down without affecting the API runtime availability. And API call execute on the message processor. It generates the analytic events. Uh, these events are asynchronously generated and consumed. The analytic pipeline, so the analytic pipeline here, uh, is indicated in this uh, analytic uh, services. The first component is the uh, analytic pipeline is this uh, uh, RPG Cupid. It is a queue uh, broker uh, right here. Uh, it is a queue broker and uh, the queues here to store the analytic uh, data and queue uh, pit server it responsible for moving data from the queue pit uh, queues to the Postgres uh, SQL and analytic raw data on the Postgres SQL here uh, will eventually combine in batches by the Postgres server. Uh, RPG data are used to power uh, some RPG Edge analytic reports and management components uh, such as um, the management server expose the management API. This API allow to add user, deploy APIs and other actions. Uh, while performing such action, the management server leverage uh, Cassandra, uh, Zookeeper and also the uh, Open LDAP to read and store relevant data uh, related to the runtime or the configuration state. So Zookeeper, it store the data uh, related to the configuration of the system, the wiring information between components and the uh, configuration state. And OpenLDAP, it store the uh, information related to the role-based access control uh, users, for example, like users, uh, roles or permissions. And the enterprise UI, it is the administrative uh, UI used by API teams to develop or manage APIs. This UI, it consumes the management uh, API to perform all actions. All features in the UI are available through the uh, management API. And the developer uh, portal is the Drupal based application. Uh, the Drupal use the Postgres SQL uh, to store the data about the users, uh, accounts, sessions as well as the modules. So that's uh, pretty much the component views of the RPG with uh, all of its responsibility and how it connected to each other, what uh, the functions of each uh, component. I think that's pretty much it guys. So uh, it's very important to understand all of this that I just uh, quickly show you starting from this graph and right here as well. If you have any questions, just let me know. Until then, see you guys in the next video.